I like Jesus Christ. He's my mercy. Everybody is a homeless. We have come to this neighborhood here and it's just all mansions. It's not the, the safest place here, is it? It's not. I'm, I'm quite tense. I'm quite nervous. We're in a place called Cracolandia. Crackland. Crack, like the drug. Yeah, crack, the drug. And how do you see your future? Oh, wow. My future is now. Mercy! Imagine this year, I don't know if it's a hit. But look, now the channel has come. Piranha. Do you want to die? Never. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Bye. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Welcome aboard. Thank you. Welcome to Sao Paulo, biggest city in Brazil. Not only Brazil, biggest city in the Southern Hemisphere. Gigantic, one of the biggest cities in the world. I believe it's in the top five. Today, we're gonna go deep into the city of Sao Paulo. Obviously a city of this magnitude, over 20 million people live here. There's many different spectrums of life. You've got, you know, obviously poverty, but you've also got the super wealthy and everything in between. So it's gonna be very interesting here at my friend Diego's house right now. We're gonna head out, see what kind of people we can meet. There's also a huge Japanese settlement here, the largest set Japanese settlement outside of Japan is here. We're gonna to go to the Japanese neighborhoods along with uh, many other places to see today. So let's go. Okay, so you can see that huge bridge there. <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> I did a little waving. <laughs> okay, so you can see that huge bridge there, Estallada. It's like kind of the iconic bridge of uh, Sao Paulo, like what you think of when you think of Sao Paulo. So here with Diego here. This is uh, my main man in Brazil and also in life. We met several years ago in, in Thailand and he's gonna be showing me not just Sao Paulo, but we're going to be traveling all over Brazil. But today, where have we come, Diego? We are at Liberdade, the Japanese neighborhood. More like Asian neighborhood, to be honest, because we have a mix of Japanese, Koreans, Chinese, all like their culture being shown here. And what's the, the history? Because we can see here there's lots of, obviously, Japanese, Chinese influence around here. A couple of years ago, we celebrated 100 years of the Japanese immigration. 100 years of the first ship with Japanese people coming to, to Brazil. They came here to work in, in farms, seeking for a better life, and they kept coming. And right. they liked well, it here. They, they liked it here. And I, I'm not really sure why. I don't know if it's the weather or what. The Japanese community is pretty much from Sao Paulo to the south. There is a lot of fruit farming and that is handled by the Japanese community. Very well integrated with our society. It's just like, it's so common to us. Like we don't see them as Japanese. It's just like, right. we're Brazilians. It's what I've noticed is it's very culturally diverse. I could be passed as a Brazilian, You right? could, like, you could totally. somebody yeah. from Japan can pass as a Brazilian. Exactly, and yeah. Exactly. Obviously, many people look like you, but there's a the wide spectrum of people. We had immigration from everywhere. The big ones are Italians and Japanese, I would, of course. Portuguese, yeah. they started the country. And then we had many years of African slavery. There are people from everywhere here. Oh well, let's go have a look around this area then. You can see this place is a really interesting fusion 
And now we come to this market area over the top of the motorway here. And uh, there's people with stalls and things. It's really cool fusion here. I haven't really come across anything like this. So Diego, obviously Brazil has a reputation to be quite dangerous and especially in the massive cities like mm -hmm. Sao Paulo or Rio. You hear lots of stories about robberies and things. What do you think about this area here? Is this somewhat stable for me to have a camera and things? I see there's police over here. So like what's the situation with safety in this in this neighborhood? In this neighborhood it's totally fine. Right. It's super super safe. Uh, especially because there is a lot of police around here. But if we go like to any other street uh, a choir street. Right. So you go down the back streets and then you never know what's going to happen. You never know what's going to happen. It's not only a reputation, it is really dangerous. Right. right. We grow up seeing all these kind of things. You were held at gunpoint at one time, right? I was. I right. was yeah. And how was that? Uh, it was scary. It was really scary. Uh, I, was, I was stuck in traffic and the guy um, knocked on the window with the, with the gun and he pointed to my, to my chest, to be honest. Well, he and he, your yeah, he did. Wow. And and I'm laughing saying it, and it's not good. And he asked for everything, and when I was going to give him my phone, I was so nervous that I threw it, and it fell on the ground. And he was like, he pushed the gun against my chest, and he he was like, do you want to die? And I was like, sorry. Right. And he left. But yeah, he took everything I had apart of my car, of course. But yeah. Wow. And that's reasonably common, that kind of thing. I think it is. It happened to most of my family. Like I know people that died, like everybody got a, a story. Yeah. My friend has a really close friend of him that died in this manner. So, I don't know, it's common. You, you gotta watch out all the time. Like, you gotta be um, conscious about it. Okay, so we've come into uh, this local market area here and we've met a, a man here called uh, Adobert. So we're going to ask him a few questions and Diego's going to translate. How long have you lived in this area for your whole life? He's been coming to this area for his entire life since he was a kid. And was it his parents or grandparents that came from Japan or does it go further back? My father is Japanese, he came from Hiroshima. His dad is Japanese. He came from Hiroshima and his mom now, she, he, she was born here. His grandparents came from his mom's side. <laughs> right, and what, what year does his dad come from? About 50 years ago. He came here when he was around 15. Right. So he's like around 50 years ago. Did your dad like when he first came here? Was he, was he welcomed? Did he have good first impressions? Foi na China, na China foi expulso, na turma. He's telling me that his dad came here because he needed to. He first went to China and then he got expelled from China. But he said for sure he was welcomed and yeah, he liked it. Okay. Yeah. Obrigado. Yeah. Obrigado. Ciao, ciao. Ciao. So we've driven about 10 or 15 minutes from the Japanese neighborhood, right? Yep, we're downtown. Downtown, and it's kind of a bit sketchy, right? It's not the, the safest place here, is it? So It's not, I'm, I'm quite tense, I'm quite nervous. We're in a place called uh, Krakolandia, crack land. Crack, like the drug? Yeah, crack, the drug. There are a lot of homeless people here using the, the drugs on the street. Right. Quite big health issue. Epidemic. Epidemic. Yeah, so we're driving around and we can see there's people smoking crack right there. I thought it would be good to show this part of the city because we're trying to cover the full spectrum of San Paolo and this is a famous area. Everybody knows about this part of the town it that is. lives here, right? Every four years during elections for mayor, it's always a big topic what to do with, with this area. Not with the area, but with the people. Look at them, they're, they're, they're really in poor conditions. Uh, the current mayor, he had promised to reduce by 80% the number of addicts on the street, living on the street. 
But uh, how do you do that? I don't know. They've tried so many things. The last project, it was an NGO funded by the by the government, and apparently they stopped funding it because what happens is when you put like police here and try to like uh, take them away or do something or like take the drugs out of the streets here, they get really violent and they start breaking everything around the city. Many actions have been tried. Once they, they put a lot of police here and they, they didn't allow them to stay in this area anymore, uh, so they spread around the city and it was a lot, a lot worse because then, I don't know, they started like robbing and stuff. And how they are handling it is just leaving, letting them be here and trying to treat them with medical conditions and stuff. So basically, several weeks ago, they tried to like clean up the streets and move people on. Some of the, the people living on the streets here and they just really didn't like that and they went crazy and started hijacking cars and hitting cars with chairs and throwing stuff around and exactly. it was quite like national news. It was national news, yeah. Right. People here, they are really unpredictable and they are really aggressive. So that's why it's quite uncomfortable to to be around here. You can see this this park here is just filled with tents. As you can see, that was quite intense. Diego felt uh, uncomfortable, I can see it on him. And like he said, it's uh, you know not the safest place to be. That's why we didn't get out of the car and driving, even driving, he said, keep the camera low. And uh, he's been in that area sometimes and they've been throwing rocks at him. Obviously it's uh, a drug addiction epidemic there. I've never seen that much like drug use out on the street. There's police around and they're just using the drugs. It's just completely uncontrollable. As I am trying to paint a full picture of Sao Paulo to the best of my ability. We have come to this neighborhood here and it's just all mansions. So I thought it would be interesting and fair. We went to that really cool Japanese market earlier today and really nice atmosphere. Families out exploring couples. And then we went to the, the crack neighborhood. And now we've come to this mansion neighborhood, million, millionaire neighborhood. Huge mansions everywhere, have a look. So Sao Paulo is the economic hub of not just Brazil, but you know, almost uh, Latin America. The economy of Sao Paulo, uh, I believe, is more than Argentina, Peru and Bolivia. All those countries combined, the economy of Sao Paulo is bigger. So it's uh, quite extreme and uh, I'll show you some of the houses. It's extreme. The craziest thing is, is this, uh, this is only a 15 minute drive from that last neighborhood we were. So such an extreme gap between wealth here. Okay, so we've come to this huge park in the middle of San Paulo and it's really beautiful. Huge body of water, lots of families and couples and friends going for walks. It's the most popular park in, in the city. It's quite insane that we were like a 15, 20 minute or so drive from that crack neighborhood, right? It is weird, isn't it? Like the city's just full of these kind of contrasts. Contrasts all the time. We drove past the, that rich area and we arrived at this really nice park yeah. right after. And do people kind of live in their own zone and these worlds don't really cross? In general, yes, but this place here, this place is like for everyone. We've, we've just been to places where they don't.
So from the park we went to a uh, so from the park we went to a, a restaurant, and uh, now we've come to the downtown area. You can see I'm looking around; it's not the safest area. Diego's been robbed around here before, so we've got to kind of watch our backs and uh, probably just get in and get out. But this is like the center of the city; it's where it was started and everything. Uh, this is the center point of San Paulo, but it's a bit on edge. There's the beautiful church up here, but we're just gonna keep our eyes on our surroundings. I know a bunch of stories about robberies and stuff around here. Right. Uh, a few years ago, a guy was killed in front of the church. And there's tents and everywhere. It is tents. You see, there are so many people on the street all the time. Oh yeah, I mean tents, but I was meaning tents. Oh, tents. Yeah, but it's, it is so tents. tents. It's both, right? I was robbed once nearby. Yeah, I was I just telling you. them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just think it's important to show this as this is like a very important landmark of the city, right? This it church is. up here. It is. This is called Say Square. This is the Say Church. If we weren't carrying a big camera, it's I would fine. be fine. Right. I would be totally fine. I would be walking around here like there's nothing wrong. But speaking English and holding a big camera, nah, not for here. <laughs> So we were just a really kind of developed, progressive restaurant, cafe kind of modern style, hipster almost, right? Yeah. And I've seen like these central areas, it looks like they've kind of been neglected and people are starting new pockets of like society mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and uh, sticking to their own group and things. Do you, are these parts of the city kind of getting forgotten by totally, yeah. the up and coming yeah, classes? Yeah. The, the businesses have left these areas. What's he saying? He was just said, it's beautiful, it's beautiful, and then he was like, cut, and then you start again. That's what he said. Okay. Brazil is the largest Catholic country in the world. 10% of all Catholics are in, in the world are, are in Brazil, so. Love is love. I Does he say? He wants to be interviewed. Does he? Yeah. Okay. I'm speaking English. Oh, oh, he's so I'm a homeless, so sorry. I'm speaking Why? English. Hello, <laughs> nice to meet you. Well, nice to meet you. What's your name? Uh, JR is my name. JR. Well, I'm a homeless. How long have you been homeless? Um, one, one year. One year. One year, more or less. What happened? It's my, my friend. Hey, look out, boy. Bullock, here, here. It's my friend. What's his name? Nick. Nick. Yeah, Nick. Oh, I like it. This name. Like it. I have one son. Uh, the name of my son is Daniel. I have two sons. Where are uh, your sons? Um, uh, now he is eleven. Eleven. Is he in San Paulo? Yeah, no, no, don't live here. Don't live here. Right. Uh, living in countryside. Where's well, countryside? Yes. Yeah. And why did you become Country. homeless? What happened? Um, money. Money. <laughs> I'm falido, como que é falido em inglês? Bankrupt. Wow. And how is life in São Paulo? Is um, it hard? It's hard. It's and, real. Like living on the streets, you, you sleep here um, in this square? Or you have is, a, This helps? Like this. This is my help. Medicine. Yeah, well. Right. Chama cachaça. And so what do you do every day? Like, what? how do you fill your day? You normally drink or...? No, 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 no. no? no every day. No. Not every day? No. Okay. No. More or less, too. Right. <laughs> this is my help. Yeah, it's it's my, it's, it's, and it, and many it's my many people drink this. Many people, other people drinking this. Every people. Everybody. 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 <laughs> okay. Because uh, this is 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 like uh, one money. It's cheap. Yeah, well, do escape him. Escape. Yeah, well, do escape him. Okay. Escape it. And how do you see your future? I don't understand. Como você vê teu futuro? Ah, wow. My future is now. So yeah, you live, you, you live in the moment. Well, in three minutes, I go. Yeah. Was my present. Here. Now is my present. I'm leaving. For you. Okay. Where did you learn um, English? I'm speaking it well. Calm, tranquilo. Keep it calm. I go and calm. <laughs> Keep it calm. I go and I said you. Well, calm. This <laughs> ain't up. Is this your friend here? No, no. No. What the hell? They know each other. But, they know each other. Uh -huh. But they know they're not friends. So wow. there's like little groups. My only friend. friend this is right, well, we got it. We got to go. So nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Right. Well, this is this huh? is it. 
This is it. Well, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Well, buddy, I'm a homeless. Right. He said he did everything, but he has he hasn't bagged yet, oh, and he, he he has to beg. Do you want to? Do you want to? I don't. I've only got cards, so do you want to go to the shop and I'll get you something that you want. Uh, no, not kill my lord. Some food. Everybody is a homeless. Right. Like a YouTube. Uh -huh. <laughs> like a, uh, more homeless. In every square has homeless. Yeah. So ever everybody's drunk. Right. Uh, every country, yeah, yeah, every yeah, yeah. homeless. Yeah. Aceite Jesus como seu Salvador. Accept Jesus for like you only, Lord. A Bíblia diz, existe vários caminhos, mas o final Lord, é a morte. The land is there. I like Jesus Christ. It's my mercy. Okay. I like Jesus Christ. Right. Oh, I love Jesus Christ. Everything is human here. So people Desim. trade things like it's bar é, barter uma system. Do rolo, right. It's a demonstration. I'm going to sell this shirt. No, 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 don't do that. He was going to sell his own shirt. Yes, this is money. You need clothes. Coisa? Don't sell it. No, I have another one. Come, come. Where are you from? Where am I from? Uh, New Zealand. Nova Zelandia. Nova Zealand. Yeah. New Zealand. New Zealand. Caralho. This is the central yeah. bank of the ever homeless. Central bank of every homeless. <laughs> yes. So homeless people come here and they get money yes. and they buy food. Yes. Okay. This is the card for homeless. <laughs> Fifteen dollars. So they right. can shower, they can eat, they can have a better life. Fifteen dollars. How often? For a month. One month. Do they get enough money to three have meals three per meals day? a day? Yeah. Valeu, hein? Falou, pessoal. Good luck. Oh, tá autorizado minha imagem. Joga no mundo aí. Beleza. Fala para ele. Beleza. Tchau. Tchau. Valeu. back at Diego's house now. That was, uh, I think, a very interesting day. There's a huge favela just close and I want to fly the drone there. We were going to go there in the next video, but the contact's fallen through because you have to have a contact to go to the favela. It's not really the smartest idea to just wander in there, especially with a camera as a foreigner. But I'm working on get, setting up another contact in a coming video to get into a favela and just show life there and, and show the positives, the negatives. It's super interesting to meet JR there, that uh, homeless man that showed us around. He was obviously very, drunk, he's very intoxicated, you know, drinking that sugar cane alcohol, the traditional Brazilian sugar cane alcohol. He spoke like three, four languages, qualified in logistics, has a university education living on the streets now. So in the next video, we're going to, I think we're gonna drive up the coast towards Rio de Janeiro, hopefully get into the favelas there. Just one thing about the city, obviously, it's just so huge, you know, there's so much driving. We were driving so much of the day. Basically what looks like a zombie film, like set, that's the sad truth, truth of it. And then you're in these super upmarket restaurants and things, and then there's mansions and things, and then you take another 15 minute drive and we were downtown, you know, meeting up with JR there and you saw the scene there, it was a bit uh, unhinged. My understanding of Sao Paulo, it's got a lot going on. It's got a lot of worlds inside of this one world of the city, of the biggest city in the Southern Hemisphere. It's many cities inside one huge. It's just gigantic, you know. The road network is really good, I must say. If you want to get across the city, there's so many intricate road systems, you know, tunnels and bridges. And there's one part of the road which is like 11 lanes. Anyway, that's the first video of this Brazil trip. And then we will be going north up towards the Amazon, up towards the, the border of Venezuela. I'm really gonna try and, you know, see all different aspects of this country and spent a lot of time in the Middle East lately. But now it's time to come back here, get stuck into the magic that this part of the world holds because there's so much diversity here. There's so many different kinds of people, you know, ethnicities and, and classes and things. It's just a, a melting pot of magic. So I can't wait to share that with you. Thank you so much for joining me. And uh, in case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night from Sampala. And how do you see your future? I don't understand. How do you see your future? Oh, wow. My future is now.